Arts and Owen Meany. I'm your host, Joan Ivering, and today we will be recapping Chapter 8, The Finger, and analyzing one of the prominent themes. Now to Rachel recap for a summary. Thank you, Joe. I apologize for any confusion that may be created because of this summary. First, Johnny, who is working at the Eastman Lumber Industry, spends the summer after his senior year separate from Owen. While Owen lives with Hester, Johnny lives with his aunt and uncle and has no success doing it with any girls. Even when it transitions to present time, Johnny still doubts his chance to have a girlfriend, let alone a wife. During an emergency room visit with Simon when Johnny was working at the lumber industry, Johnny hears that Marilyn Monroe has died by a drug overdose. When he calls Owen, Owen rants about the country looking for a good man, a savior, but the country keeps being used. At the end, he adds, that's what will happen to all of them. They'll be used. Maybe he doesn't feel so great about his known future. During Owen and Johnny's first year at the university, they hang out with Hester's friends. But when she graduates, they don't have other friends. Johnny continues to struggle to find a girl. Over the summer, he works in the granite industry in the monument shop. He wants to work in the quarry, but Owen won't let him. When Owen learns that Kennedy was killed, he changes. He is never the same person. He becomes lazy and begins doing worse in school than even Johnny. However, he does continue to keep his dream private from Johnny and practice the basketball shot. One day, when they were practicing outdoors by the Mary Magdalene statue, it got dark enough that the statue couldn't be seen. Owen questions Johnny if the statue is still here. Johnny responds, of course. Owen repeatedly asks him and Johnny becomes frustrated. Finally, Owen stops and says, see, that's how I feel about God. I can't see him, but I absolutely know he is there. That'll shut Johnny up for a while. In present time Canada, John reflects on his move to Canada. He moved right after the drafting for the Vietnam War began and after Owen's death. He reflects upon his reason for moving as someone opposing the war and not as someone escaping the draft and also upon the friendliness of the Canadians and their push for him to forget about America. Back to the plot in Gravesend. Owen yearns to be a combat team member, not necessarily because he wants to, but because he knows God will put him there. He believes this because of his dream in which he sees himself saving many Vietnamese children, but dying in the arms of a nun. After what is described as potentially losing his limbs. Unfortunately, he does not pass the obstacle course at basic training and is not selected for a combat team. Hester is angry at him for wanting to fight and even abuses him physically for not loving him. Before Owen leaves for his army duties in Arizona, behind the desk type work, he and Johnny head off on a trip to Sawyer Depot and even look at Canada to, to fulfill some of Owen's desires. Once Owen leaves for the base camp, Johnny and Hester enjoy hearing about his experiences at his camp. He is responsible for delivering corpses to their families and assisting in the grievances. While he is away, the issue of Johnny's draft becomes apparent because as he is about to graduate grad school and no longer has a deferment. To solve this problem, Owen cuts off Johnny's right index finger. And the chapter just ends like that. Bye-bye, finger. Back to Joe. Thank you, Rachel. That's quite a sacrifice to escape the draft. Now to Teresa Themes. Thank you, Joe. One thing Rachel didn't mention too much is Johnny's deep reflection on his experience as a Canadian, especially his first moments as a Canadian. When he first moved to Canada, he paid special attention to the actions and publications of Amex, the Union of American Exiles, or American Expatriates. One of these publications listed the first five priorities for American expatriates, the fifth being to try to fit into Canadian life. Johnny states the importance of putting this number five first to avoid hostility from the Canadians, but he also hears that Owen's response would have been, what a perfect opportunity for a quote of the week. That sounds like something an American would say. The first priority in every young American's life is to try to fit into American life. Doesn't the stupid Toronto Daily Star know who these young Americans in Canada are? 
These are Americans who left their country because they couldn't and didn't want to fit in. Now they're supposed to make it their first priority to fit in here? Boy, that makes a lot of sense. That's really brilliant. That's worth one of those stupid journalism awards. Page 464. Wow, sounds like Ivering is trying to make a point. For not only did he create an opportunity for Owen to say this, but this quote was imaginary anyway. Owen never said it. Johnny only predicted what he would have said. Let's look at this quote. Clearly, Owen is speaking for Ivory, and he is frustrated by Americans. In this instance, he is frustrated for their desire to fit in and be like all the other Americans. This refers back to the American identity that is accented in so many American novels. Ivering is again presenting that trying to be average or to be the same as someone else creates a life not worth living. He not only created a character who defies all the typical characteristics of an American, but he demonstrates success in this character as a way of saying, look, to be successful, to be a leader, a person has to be different and not afraid of doing something out of the ordinary. Personally, I'd recommend that you take this to heart. Back to you, Joe. Thank you, Teresa. That nearly brought me to tears. How true. How true. With that, we will see you next week and... No! Let me talk about Owen! Uh, uh. Petunia, hush. I'm certain you will have plenty of time next week. We will see you next week for the grand finale of Seeing Depth in Owen Meany.